So we were brilliant all along, eh? Huh. Isn't that nice? Three one against top of the league. Could have been a million. Is that the playoff resurrection still on? Wouldn't that be sweet? So welcome again, I'm Neil Allison, this is my notebook, and if you're not sure just how authentic I am, I actually do have a notebook. And I'm still on a major high after battering Fulham, so we're going to talk a lot about that, and a lot about what that sort of performance means for us now, and probably next season more importantly, because let's be honest, some of our players were darn useful the other day. Let's go. So even though we dominated Fulham earlier in the year, we've kind of gone our separate ways. They've gone on to score an insane amount. We've gone on to create and balls up an insane amount. And after the pattern of performances and results recently, I went into Sunday lacking my usual unfaltering belief. It just felt like things were going to peter out this season. So much so I even put on a few bets, which is really unlike me and huge caveat before we start. I don't know what I'm doing, but I found £9.50 still in my online account. So I thought I'd throw a pound on a bunch of bets, you know, to ease the pain of losing. Given that I thought I knew exactly how a game on TV would go. We'd probably score. We'd probably threaten. We might go ahead, we would definitely lose. So it's one of those lovely win-win scenarios, except I don't actually care about winning £7.20 on a bet. And actually I had a conversation with my mate about how much I was willing to spend each week if I could ensure Cov would get three points. The number was disturbingly high, but it turns out I will always prefer Cov to win. All of these made vague Cov sense to me. Turns out I needn't have bothered. The real Cov turned up. We were quick, we were relentless, Victor was having the time of his life up there, and we were getting some real life genuine luck. Now that didn't stop me from feeling frustration during a game, that we weren't putting it to bed like we've seen so many times before, and especially as it was Fulham, like we know these guys can score, and pulling back a 2-0 deficit would be nothing to them. There was still a hint of nervy decision making in the box, making me nervy, but on this occasion the ball still went in, when we really needed it. We scored after a strong start, we then backed it up with a second. Often we tail off and let the other team come straight back at us. We continued to threaten them as much as they did, trying to reply, so they couldn't really throw everything at us. And ultimately we punished them for their mistakes, specifically their crazy ponderous method of moving the ball from the defence. It happened at our place last year, it kept happening on Sunday. Proper madness. But we blew them away. And one player specifically basically battered them. So last week I called him a sporadic tank. The fact that he then put in that performance only serves to vindicate that statement. Look at what he's capable of. He was enormous. It's like he feels out his opposition and sometimes he's just too concerned with the physical battle, and he has to be, that he can't do the other stuff. But when he battles and knows that he's got the beating of the opponent, and he figured that out really quickly at the weekend, he goes into this full Swedish beast mode. And he's done it so often against some of the biggest teams in the league. It's no wonder fans elsewhere are eyeing him up. And the question of how much should we be selling for is coming up. So first, I don't want to sell him, but that isn't the point. And I doubt the club will care. But if we do sell him, let's get some real money for him. Years we've sold ourselves massively short on our valuation of players, and I'm already starting to see conversations of where people are saying they would be happy with five to eight million. Let's be firm, that is insane. I'll tell you why. Look at these. These are some of the top sales from championship clubs. Here we have a 23-year-old Swedish international striker in the English championship who is battering the best teams in the league and is one of the top scorers. I know transfer fees are largely based on fashion and player coolness, but if we do one thing in our negotiations this summer, let's bring up this list and make sure we slot him in somewhere because this kind of money is nothing to Prem teams and that is where he's heading. And yes, I'm looking at you Middlesbrough. You can't afford him. Get out the chat. Again, I don't want to sell because he was the difference on Sunday and allows us to do what we do. And with all those strengths that he has, but if we do sell the guy, let's get compensated properly. I don't know specifically what that number should be, but when I look at that list, it's in the 15 million range. And that's not me over-egging our players. Why don't you ask Tim Ream or Marco Silva at Fulham what they think of Victor Jokeres, huh? Of course, absolutely great to see Cov representation in the Championship Team of the Week. If you're going off eyeball judgment alone, for there's no complaining. Vic and Hamer stood out for quality, and actually if eyeball judgment was the main fact here, then O'Hare's looking at this and thinking he should be there. Well, it's not eyeball judgment. It's not experts looking at the highlights or picking who scored the goals or who Don Goodman takes a worryingly large keenness for. It's based on the whoscored.com rating system. Not an advert. They don't know me. I'm on a little crusade with this right now because it is maddening what happens online every time they announce this team. Comments are full of robbed, anti, 
insert my club here, must be blind. Look, I get it again. If it was the olden days team of the week, you'd want it full of the best players. And sometimes the best aren't just the ones who are scoring the goals. But if you're picking that team, that gets you in trouble. So the EFL decided to allow mathematics to select the team. And they washed their hands of responsibility for that. And I, for one, believe them. That's probably the best way to do it. For me, numbers and ratings are a bit of a laugh and just people trying to bring some order and understanding to the utter chaos that goes on on the football pitch. Do I think they're perfect and accurately describe a player's performance? No. You score two off your bum coming off the bench after five minutes, you're still getting big numbers and you might even make team of the week with that performance. And that's your bum. That's weird, right? But if you just accept they're for entertainment purposes, and personally, I do feel entertained by them. Some of the important stuff just isn't rateable. So to sum up, ratings aren't a plot to sabotage the wider view of your team. They're just one way of trying to understand performance. We'd only moan if it was down to opinion. It'll be okay. This leads quite nicely onto the big question that's on many COP fans lips right now. When is Dominic Hyam going to get an international call up? Objectively, he's playing well. Numerically, he's playing well. You'd like to think he's on their radar. Whether the other players he's up against are better than him, it will always be down to the Scottish management's judgment but purely from a cop fan's perspective i really hope he gets a look in at some point that level of consistency deserves some recognition even just to give him some opportunity in the squad to see how he measures up is a championship quality defender better than a scottish premier league defender i'm not here to judge or be crucified for having an opinion on that but that'll be the test for him i just love him he's just so metronomic and trustworthy i don't want this to be another john eustace situation when that poor man was playing week in week out for a premier league side and the guys at england under 21 management deemed he wasn't worthy. Furious though it was, should have given him a chance. Saying all that, Scotland didn't fancy John Fleck until he was in the Premier League as well. I wouldn't get too head up over things, he's just got to keep doing what he does. And if they don't fancy that, that's their loss, probably. Fortunately, he's so understated, it's actually kind of good for us. It feels unlikely that anybody's going to come in for him during the summer. Cue immediate bid from Middlesbrough. Big weekend coming up. Not directly for us, because that would mean admitting that I'm still mildly interested in the playoffs. I am mildly interested in the playoffs. But it's true, two games in four days could change everything for a lot of teams. The table is primed for big movement. Let's just indulge your optimism for one minute about Cov. We pretty much have to win back to back. And if you do, it's still going to be hard. But as I've stated loads and loads already, I prefer the hope because it makes it interesting. I was actually messing around with the predictor the other day. You know, just seeing how many results I can mess up for other teams just to get us in. And it's still achievable. But it needs two things. Us to perform and get the results that the Fulham game shows that we're capable of. And yet we haven't done that really for the entire second half of the season. And for the other teams to be human too. I reckon the other teams will be human. Except for Forrester who are probably already gone. But I also think we're likely to be human as well. Which is why it's probably out of reach. But I'll still have an eye on it until it's not. So in that spirit, first up, let's beat Birmingham. Let's not draw one with Birmingham. Let's not allow Lyle Taylor to score against us. Do that and we retain some excitement moving into the final four games. Which is all we can really do. Extend the hope for as long as possible. And if it doesn't come off, being hopeful still keeps me happy. Okay, those are my notes. Thank you to everybody who's made it this far into the video. YouTube will be pleased. Strong start last week to the notebook as I grabbed a couple dozen subscribers. Cheers. If you're new, click that like button. Maybe just treat it as a handshake if you saw me in the street. No commitment. You're just being polite. Hope you all have a marvellous Easter weekend and enjoy thinking about Cobb and religion. Come on Cobb, keep me happy a little bit longer.